Shh. Be very, very quiet. My name is Clayton Huffman. I'm with the Key West Citizen, and we are hunting iguanas. Feral iguanas, that is, guys. That's my best Elmer Fudd, little German I, southern accent, the best I can do right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm not good at, at um, voices. But uh, seriously, no, we're talking about iguanas right now. Um, as you can see in the article for this Sunday, um, we're talking about, I'm going to have throughout this video, pictures, hopefully I get some interviews. Um, not a lot of people want to talk about this subject right now because it's such a hotbed. But um, we are, we're going to tackle this issue. This is um, it's coming more and more um, apparent that something needs to be done. The feral iguanas, feral means technically wild, but they were, people had them as pets, the people had them as, um, and they escaped from them, or people, just owners, just let them go, they're moving somewhere, they don't want to take care of them, or they got too big, or whatever they can be. Uh, these iguanas are non-native to our ecosystem here in South Florida, and the Keys. They have no predators, no competitors to um, keep them in check, so, you know, they are pretty much breeding like mad right now. Um, one of the ground zero spots is here in Kiwa Cemetery, which these iguanas, they will bear, you know, they're not out laying out in the sun, um, causing havoc. They actually um, will burrow over underneath the ground and lay their eggs, you know, after, the, you know, the two week mating season they have during the dry season, first part of the dry season, or they will just basically you know, the structure they bury underneath or next to will collapse because, I mean, some of these can get up to about, you know, 18 pounds, you know, up to five feet long. So you can, you know, you can do the math. So it can cause a lot of damage like they're doing here at the cemetery and, um, you know, the golf course and other places around town. We'll go to those, kind of show you guys around. So, like I said, hopefully we get some people to um, come on camera and talk about it. You know, it is a hotbed. Um, some things I want to talk about here with the iguanas, they do tell you, you know, there's ways to deter them from um, coming onto your property, such as um, laying sheet metal around your tree so they don't climb up in the trees. They are also, uh, they tell you, you know, put a um, fence, you know, like chicken fence or, or what we call chicken fence or around the, the um, around you, you know, shrubs and uh, plants. Also, this one is one of my favorite, guys. You take three cloves of garlic, okay? You take four um, red hot peppers and a bucket of water. You spray that around your yard. It's supposed to deter them. Now, this hasn't been proven, but <laughs> I'll have to try to see if it works. Um, you know, most of them don't want to go in there with your pets and stuff like that. Like I said, these iguanas get kind of big, so basically you can they eat your plants, you know, certain, you know, certain plants they like to eat and they can destroy, you know, like your, you know, your garden stuff that you're, or your landscaping, they're really notorious for that, plus burying around the ground, which is really destroy your landscaping. But they also, you know, the big ones can eat other lizards and eat uh, a small animal, okay? And the big ones are very, the males are very territorial against themselves and others. So... You know, they can feel threatened by a human. They can come up and attack, which, you know, can cause problems with small kids and, you know, other people that, you know, don't know anybody. We have, do have a lot of tourists down here. And they are not, you know, part of our ecosystem. So it does cause a lot of havoc there. There's different ways, as we're going to talk throughout the video, uh, and I'm going to show you around, like, different clips and stuff of the, the iguanas. And there are certain um, other, like, non -lethal, there's also lethal methods. Which I just talked about the non-lethal, but there are also lethal methods that you can use, um, such as trapping. Okay, which I can give you the website here to go to to learn the specifics about you know what kind of traps to use. But you gotta understand, this is only good on private property, not on public property. All right, so on your own property you can trap them, but you got you can't release them, go somewhere else and release them, as the FWC states. Florida Wildlife Commission says you, you know, you got to if you trap it, you have got to, uh, you can't relocate it anywhere because they're not part of our ecosystem. You got to terminate its life. You have to do that humanely, okay? Because they are protected. Okay, you can't kill these animals inhumane. Uh, they are protected. You can get fined and you can get in trouble for this. All right. 
So that's very important to say if you go do the trapping method, you're gonna have to, you know, take care of the animal yourself. Also, call, you know, the SVCA, call um, for a wildlife mission to see where you can take after um, take terminating the animal where you can take it to be disposed of. Also, and speaking of that, there's a, a state in the state of Florida, all right? If you're on private property, which is something new people are talking about now, and this is something that's kind of um, going to raise a lot of attention to people, and I want to let you guys understand this fully. If you have a pellet gun, not a BB gun, a pellet gun, and you are on private property, your own property, your friend's property, as long as it's private property, you can you can shoot to kill with that pellet gun a iguana. But here's the catch. It's got to be a one-shot, one-kill. It's got to be humanely done. All right? You can't just sit there and peg in the stomach, peg it there, and just watch it run away. You got to shoot it like one-shot, one-kill. That means through the eye, the base of the skull. Um, the head's going to be the one. So you got to be close and personal with this. Uh, they want this done humanely. All right? And you can't go on city property, uh, a state park, and go with a BB gun. And BB guns are not considered a firearm. Okay, so it's, you don't have to get a permit for a pellet gun at all. It's not considered for arm. State of Florida sanctions it. Um, so if you're sitting in your backyard, you got one in your flower pipe bed, you can, you know, you got some snapper blood in you, and you can do a one shot, one kill, or get right on top of it and take it out. You can. And again, disposal, you got to contact your FWC, FWC um, or you know the animal shelter and see where you can dispose of this animal properly all right these animals like I said they get up to 18 pounds uh, you know five feet long and also another problem that they have is you get a group of them um, and when they defecate you know in large sums and you go see some clips here of that they can carry the salmonella bacteria the salmonella bacteria guys all right which is not good at all and it just makes for a, a huge unsanitary mess along with the burrowing along with you know everything else uh, you, they do not have many predators or competitors so they're running you know unchecked and there's some stuff we need to take you know we need to take measures take care of this I'm trying to keep them in check so I gave you a few ideas um, I gave you a website to go to to get you know get some more or you know learn how to you know, whatever avenue you want to go to, to you know, to take care of this menace. And um, they're not going anywhere. There's just too many of them. They're here to stay. So we need to figure out how we can address this issue and move forward. So now I want to take some clips and take some pictures and, and move to some other locations and kind of show you, you know, some different areas around town and uh, show you a few things to see, you know, how they're impacting our society in our way of life so hope you guys enjoy hey guys listen one last thing I forgot to mention the opening segment when you're going out and if you do not want to trap them you don't want to hunt them yourself with the pellet gun if you don't want to do the deterrence and you just want to say hey listen I'd rather pay somebody to take care of them for me you do have that option all right there are people out there that will take care of you you're going to problem you just call them they come out, take care of it, set traps, they, they dispose of the animal themselves, they do, you know, they're licensed um, and insured, so they take care of everything for you. This is an option. Um, you can find them in Yellow Pages, you know, on the internet, word of mouth. Yeah, I see people drive around, you know, say, iguana services on their cars. So there is ways to find these people, all right, and they can take care of it for you. That is an option. All right, that's a whole different option. Um, everybody process is different so you just got to talk to them and take care of that yourself so now truly let's get on and put some iguanas speaking of one of the issues right now here's a male iguana it just went down as you can see that's one of the holes it dug underneath that grave right there. It just was out there sunning because the sun came out. And there it goes. Okay, guys. We are here with 
him right now. He doesn't want to go on camera. We're about to go in his backyard. And um, he keeps about, they got about a dozen iguanas back there, ranging from about a foot to about three foot long. Uh, you will see this soon. He um, feeds them on his back deck. So, like I said, he doesn't want to be put on camera. Um, we'll take the audio out of this equation. You're just going to have straight video here. I hope you guys enjoy and kind of see um, how up close and personal these iguanas can be. If you live down here, you already know. Like I said, they're part of our environment. We're trying to get a better understanding of them because there's really not a um, full study on these iguanas and the impact they're taking on our ecosystem. So, here's to the video.
as you can see right here in the cemetery as we're talking you have multiple I mean babies adults males females just all over the place and you can see where they burrow underneath these graves here it's just a total mess and this is one of the problems we're having with the iguanas the the breeding is out of control you have just the way they rot and just destroy the landscape and you can see some of the cons that they have with the ecosystem they may be good as pets people like them as pets but without predators and competitors to keep yourself in check it's like anything they would just overpopulate and overrun and eventually will destroy the ecosystem. Okay guys, I um, want to wrap this up, get a conclusion here. As we talked, you know, throughout this, kind of went with the impact it's taking the ecosystem and the negative side. Um, you got some people for this on the positive side, let's talk about that. Um, there's people that say, you know, they love them as pets, they like them in the backyard, they feed them, you know, the, the salads, the banana peels, I have biscuits. Um, they like having them around but as you can see in some of this our ecosystem does not support um, these iguanas um, there are steps as we talked about you can trap them you can um, even you know use your pellet gun to go hunting on, on your own property or private property not public property but you got to do that humanely you got also deterrence like you know we talked about how to fix your yard up to better save you know to save your landscaping but guys it costs you know it costs us money and damage for landscaping um, on public lands you know these, like I said these things can get up to 18 pounds five feet long uh, and they, they burrow in creatures with if they you know something that big burrows underneath a structure it's going to cause some damage some erosion and you can see that prime example where I'm at here in the cemetery prime example right behind me with this whole family you got little ones big ones uh, in conclusion with this we have got to find a happy medium um, like we do with all living creatures all right it's got to be a balance these things were brought into our ecosystem by um, people having them as pets and irresponsibly letting them out or escaping whatever it may be they're here they're not going anywhere we have got to get a solution a proper solution to this problem because it is becoming it has already became a real issue uh, and it's causing a lot of damage throughout South Florida, not just the Keys. So with that piece, that's what something I want to take away from this, that we need to everybody come together and get a proper solution. I know we're working on it with trapping, with um, properly um, protecting your landscaping to even the state of Florida, let you know you can use a pellet gun, but you got to do it humanely um, to get to eradicate the iguana issue. So guys, my name is Clayton Huffman. I'm with the Key Citizen, and I hope you took something away from this piece about the iguanas, and we can move forward and come to a, a conclusion about this this issue um, really damaging our ecosystem.